everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Chroma Squad, a tactical RPG inspired by Saban's Power Rangers. I can't remember if that was there the last time I took a look at this game. That strikes me as something that is probably legally required. In any case, Chroma Squad's, uh, it's been making some waves. It came out, uh, last week, depending on, you know, where you draw your definition for the weeks, but I'm not gonna get into those semantics there. It is a, uh, turn-based, squad-based tactical RPG. You can think of it as being similar to XCOM, with the aesthetic of a name I'm probably gonna botch, Sentai te Television Programs. The Power Rangers, for example. You know, you're, you're doing karate and kung fu and martial arts and stuff like that. You're transforming into a giant robot that punches things. It's, you know, breakfast cereal and Fox Kids from the 1995 era. In any case, I played about an hour and a little bit of this so far, which is enough to take me the fir through the first season of Chroma Squad, because it is kind of a, a little bit management-y as well, a little bit of a tycoon side as you build your own uh, like t television studio, basically. But I'll get into the story as we talk about it. And I've had a pretty pleasant time so far. It's also $15 uh, USD. I'm going to load it up here. Uh, so I'm on Season 2, Episode 6, played for one hour. See, I told you, and we're uh, apparently located in Japan. This is Lionsgate Studio. Hopefully I'm not going to have to put something in my video description about how I'm not actually legally affiliated with Lionsgate. It just struck me as being kind of uh, an appropriate name given the circumstances. So, there's basically... Imagine this, and it's not necessarily a fully fair comparison to make, but imagine Chroma Squad as FT... or not FTL, sorry, too much convoy. Uh, XCOM Light. There's two aspects of the game, there's kind of, it wouldn't really call it a base building aspect of the game, but uh, a management aspect of the game, which is this right here, and then there's a television program filming, which is the more squad based kind of like, you're out on an expedition part of the game. But it's a game that definitely has a different tone and atmosphere than something like XCOM, where it's all about, oh, save the world, and if someone dies, they're dead forever. This doesn't have permadeath, at least to the best of my knowledge, and it also um, uh, doesn't have the same kind of like base building stuff going on, but it's also a, a much like cuter, funnier, lighter tone. It's a very pleasant game to play. I know I've used that word twice already, but for real. Um, I'm just gonna ignore, I'm not gonna say ignore, but don't pay too much attention to what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, I'm going to buy some stuff to spend money so that I'm, you know, well aware that I'm equipped properly for this next fight. And then we're gonna do the fight because I think this is the kind of thing where, you know, people who are interested in this stuff are going to want to see the actual gameplay. This this stuff is all somewhat secondary, but I need to think for a second. I got enough to buy basically three weapons here. Who does not have a weapon yet? I have not given some one of my teammates a weapon here. Allow me to go see my uh, actors here first. Equipment. J- uh, wait, let's say, start with Kimberly here. Kimberly has a sword. Cardboard sword. Techie has a sword. Lead has a sword. Assault has a toy s- Oh, it's toy sword versus cardboard sword, maybe. Cardboard sword kinda sucks, I think. You have a cardboard sword? Okay, so we'll buy you, like, a bow or something like that. Uh, and I know this is probably not the best way to start the video, but you get the idea. We'll buy- Ah, I equipped it on the wrong person! That's okay. And, uh, we'll also buy you- You're our scout. I'll buy you... Maybe a Japanese toy dagger. Lowers your weapon damage, but really raises your critical chance and your attack. Okay, yeah, that's fine. We'll roll with that. I gotta go back here for just a second. I realize this is not the way to handle it. Anyway, um, let's drag off your... Didn't I give you a bow? And we're gonna drag that off in some way. No, it's not equipped. Okay, good. You're gonna equip the toy sword. And then this. Can I not equip this on anybody else? I would like to equip it on her. Yes, equip. Sweet! Okay. I figured it out, you guys. We have another toy sword as well. This is my mistake for being an idiot. You got the toy dagger. This is perfect. Okay. Let's start the show here. So we get a, usually a choice, but I guess because this is our first episode... Uh, ignore this. I'm gonna go to my email and spoil some of the story. There we go. We have to do this uh, in order to progress. It's got kind of like a Cook, Serve, Delicious style. Um... Email storytelling system. It works fine. The story is also told through uh, copious amounts of dialogue. There is a lot of narrative happening in the game. It's less mechanics focused and more kind of, I guess, aesthetics focused. I'll talk about the mechanics as we get in, but I'm not necessarily fully comfortable saying that. Anyway, what's our goal? When we film an episode, our goal is to kill all the enemies, but we're not really killing them, you know, we're just kind of beating them up uh, and then trying to put on a good show for the fans, basically. So our goal is to make money, but also to get a high audience. So our max audience here is 4,000. A real-world threat looms over something very dear to our heroes. Will they stop it in time? Director's instructions. This helps us get more audience. Keep all of your heroes standing. If they die, effectively, they get knocked out, but they come back. Defeat 10 enemies. All right, let's see here. 
cool little uh, warp CRT effect here as well. But I'm actually glad that this doesn't permeate throughout the rest of the... Well, it usually doesn't permeate throughout the rest of the video. There we go. It kind of faded away there, and it got more scalar, which is cool. Um, there are games like, uh, you know, Super Win the Game that have that more uh, warped kind of CRT effect. It's nice, but it also makes my brain feel weird after I play, like, more than a half hour of it. By the way, all these characters are customizable. Uh, this, this is the posse that I've chosen to roll with based on their stats and their salaries and stuff like that. But you can, you know, customize your own. There's aliens, dogs, frogs, etc., etc. A brand new season. We should hope, or we should introduce more dramatic episodes. Otherwise, the audience might get tired or even bored. We should make them even more realistic. I mean, you know, once you see what happens, you probably won't adhere to that too long. But anyway, don't worry, friends. Our new script has got it covered. Today was a this is where I need bear tappy. Today was supposed to be a standard day in their heroes' lives, but with great power comes great responsibility. Lot of references. You might even call them memes to things. And I hate to even bring this up because people get so polarized about it before even seeing it. It doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the reaction to it sometimes. Like Guacamelee had like some meme pictures in the background and people were like, Duh, this game, I have a more re refined sense of humor. And if you missed Guacamelee because there were memes in it and you're too sophisticated for that, you missed out on one of the best Metroidvanias in like the last five years. Don't let it turn you away from this game either necessarily. It's not like they exclusively talk in like, you know, doge quotes or anything like that. What would heroes do without trouble lurking about? Monsters appear because of reasons. All right. Hopefully we'll actually get, like, there's no way, as far as I know, to go back and play earlier episodes, which are essentially missions, and then seasons are kind of like your campaigns. Um, I can't go back and play earlier episodes, so my hope is that they'll give us, like, a good opportunity here for me to tutorialize the things that you're seeing. But it's a very, very simple uh, tactical system that is going to be very easy to explain, or at least display, for anybody who's ever played XCOM. One of my complaints about the game is that it doesn't seem that difficult, that complex. I've heard that around Season 4, Season 5, on the normal difficulty, which is the middle one, uh, which I'm playing on right now, it starts to get a little bit more difficult, but uh, as of right now, I have not even come close to losing any characters. All right, I'm planning to add some cool computer effects to the scene later on. For now, use your imagination. Okay, keep all your heroes standing, defeat 10 enemies. There we go. This is more around the amount of enemies that I, I'm normally expecting here. So we have five units. This is, um, you can name them yourself, by the way. This is Tarzan. He's our scout. Uh, gives him huge movement. This is Jennifer. She's our assault. Lots of damage. This is Jason. He's our lead. Uh, I'm actually not sure what that does, but I think when he does things, the audience likes it more. This is uh, Bilbert. He's our techie guy. Yeah, techie. And then Kimberly is our assist here. So even though we have weapons, we don't actually get to use them. Remember, in like the Power Rangers TV show, they're just, you know, normal uh, teenagers until they transform, which is what jungle time is down here. You can customize this to say, I think it's supposed to say like chromatize. I turn it to jungle time because I'm an idiot. Anyway, I like that that's all customizable. So what we could do on a turn, like, let's take uh, our assault over here and we'll go punch this weak nutcracker and it should kill them. Uh, we can see that her attack is 96 to 113 and their HP is 80. So we look at Tarzan, he's only 74 to 87, so we actually don't have a guaranteed kill there if we use him. But what we might want to do is something like this, this big old teamwork button. If we move someone adjacent, like another teammate adjacent to the enemy, and then hit teamwork, we can actually get uh, an assist move going on here. So this is the gimmick, I th well, beyond the aesthetic of the game, this is the gimmick that makes it pretty interesting. We can also use teamwork in another way, for example. Now, this is a bad move. But um, we can use teamwork here and perform some acrobatics, which is what these like yellow squares are, to enhance the range of my, uh, my lead, who didn't have much range to begin with. So now, I can actually have him go over here and he can spring up off of him. And uh, we get some cool kind of synergies and stuff going there. So there's a deeper level of planning. It's not just like, I want this person to do this, I want this person to do this, you get behind cover here, yada, yada, yada. It's, uh, it's cool because you actually have to think about the placement of all of your units in reference to one another. And uh, it, it leads to some, some fun stuff that actually happens here. So the, the problem is once you have a teamwork move, like if I put this guy on teamwork, and then um, let's use our techie here. If I use my techie to attack this unit, we'll get the kill, but that also takes him off teamwork. So you might be thinking like, oh, maybe I can just place someone in the middle of a bunch of enemies and use him for a bunch of assists. I thought that too. It doesn't work that way. Fortunately or unfortunately. We didn't quite get the kill there, but that's okay. Um, I think we should probably try for an assist kill on uh, Ninja Turtle Man here because these are our two strongest units, but they still didn't quite get the job done, unfortunately. But the other reason you want to use teamwork attacks uh, is because you want to keep this main maintenance of uh, like an equilibrium between strategy and 
Entertainment. Oh, we got some more enemies coming out here. Now we can actually get into jungle time, though. Because we've gotten enough uh, audience power or something like that. Um, but yeah, like a teamwork attack is worth more audience, which is this thing up here, which is basically your score. So we're going to enter jungle time right now. Jungle time is what allows us to transform. And they shout DJ Khaled. That's not the default characteristic for that, by the way. Second season, we actually have new costumes. And when you're in your uh, jungle time, which you stay in for the rest of the episode, um, you have new abilities. So dagger, attack with your equipped, equipped dagger. Does a lot of damage. We might want to use this on, uh, well, that guy doesn't have very much HP left. We might want to just go over there and murder this dude as such. Actually, 47 damage is not what I expected there. What do you have? Square House Kick. Deal 120% damage to all adjacent enemies. Yo, that seems amazing. So why don't we try to drop, uh, like, do your uh, teamwork here, because you're usually not that uh, aggressive. And then I can put you over here and try a Square House Kick and probably get one or two kills. Two kills right there. I'm not sure how much audience that's worth for us, but hey, it got the job done there. And for this guy, we might want to pull him over here and then just, uh, I mean, an attack will get the kill, probably. What's his attack right now? 96 to 113. But we also have this sword attack that will do like 150% damage, which is cool to think about. What do you have right now? 62 to 75. So we're probably not going to kill you, and you're the last person on the turn here. So we have multi-shot, attack all enemies for 85%, or do 84 to 97 damage. What is your health? 80. All right, well, I guess we'll probably take this opportunity. Oh, he's got one HP! That hurts, man. But we're about to finish off all these enemies and probably move into the next scene. One of the real strengths of the game is the fact that the se the, the episodes... Um, I want to use your ability. Let's just do like a basic attack with somebody here to finish the job here. Um, it's the fact that the episodes are scripted. So XCOM is a little different in that XCOM is... Uh, I have to think about this for a second, but XCOM is... I'll talk and then I'll think. XCOM is uh, a little bit more sandboxy. I mean, the, there's scripted things in the game, but, you know, Mission X for, you know, hostage extraction. Mission X for exterminate all aliens. Mission whatever. It, those are sandbox. You can do as many of those or as few of those as you want. And what happens there is emergent gameplay. Oh, Jennifer got shot. I barely got her out. But then she came back and became a mech and won the day for me. There's very little emergent gameplay in Chroma Squad, which I dislike, but... In, instead, you kind of get tugged along on this story, and all the episodes change, and the missions change as you go throughout them, which means there's probably a little bit less replayability, if that's the kind of thing that matters to you, but it's also a little bit more engaging in the moment, uh, which is good because, as you can probably see here, the strategic elements are relatively light. Circle of Friendship heals all allies of the four tiles away for 30% of their health. Heal Doken is basically just a healing fireball. Attack with your equipped bow. This seems really good. So let's just try this one out like this. I've never used this before. We've killed 10 enemies, so we got more audience there. We're probably going to have like way more missions showing up here in just a second. So who has not gone? You have not gone, and you have not gone. I think we should just go for the two kills here. So probably let's try taking out our sword, and that should easily KO him. We should have used that on the other enemy. I'll talk about these items that we're getting a little bit. Ah, oh, I fucked it up. <laughs> We're not gonna... Teamwork is also like our Overwatch, by the way, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this guy killed. I might be able to do our dagger attack, though. Nope. Teamwork it is. I mean, it's not really an Overwatch, because if enemies walk into your range, nothing happens to them, but still. Oh my god. Maybe we don't... go to another thing on this. Maybe, like, what I'm supposed to do is actually just kill all of the enemies, and then it ends. Attack with your equipped dagger. Okay, well, we use a stunning pose, which we can do for free here. And that actually just stuns all the enemies around us, so it should be easier to kill them in the future. But let's see how we're going to get, you know, multiple kills here. This is going to be an easy KO. Presumably, and it is getting us more audience here. How about you? We could try to, like, um... How much HP do you have? 90? What's your attack? 96 to 113? I'm going to throw an Eagle Lasso over here, which should allow me to just KO you in one hit. I'm a... Uh, well, ah, I didn't do so well on that one. Um, I will say, I, let me say something that I think is a little bit... I'm conflicted about when it comes to... Jeez, we very nearly killed him again. I'm conflicted about when it comes to uh, Chroma Squad. I like that there's all these teamwork elements, but at the same time... That doesn't really help us here. At the same time, 
I find myself not really wanting to use the teamwork elements that much because a lot of enemies die in one hit. At least like these super weak enemies die in one hit. The slightly stronger enemies usually take two hits and then a teamwork assist makes sense. So I kind of feel conflicted because on the one hand I'm like, well I want to do like a teamwork assist. But on the other hand I'm like, I don't really want to do a teamwork assist because it wastes the turn of another unit. So I'm not sure if I'm, if I'm missing something about that situation that should make it work, but I often feel that I'm making a subpar strategic choice, like this one for example. I might end up... I'm not able to do it, but I could have sent like two units over here. In fact, this might actually work now that I look at it. Like, I can do a double KO here, but it, um, it doesn't really make that much sense to do. I, I, I could have KO'd him in one hit with any of these units anyway, and then... Um, I, I would have had the other person just move somewhere else and have like a, a fun time themselves, but uh, or you know accomplish something more strategic. But uh, well, we've only got one more turn until we. Oh, this is what the directions, our director's instructions are here: survivor eight turns. So I oftentimes find that I'm I've almost like compromised, or I am compromising my uh, like. There's another situation right here. I could easily kill you in one hit like this, but we could also do an assist to probably get more fans. But there's not really much point in doing so, if you know what I mean. Anyway. I hope you get what I'm saying there. I feel like I'm conflicted sometimes between making the choice that uh, is the best choice to make strategically and making the choice that is the uh, best choice to make for entertainment. Which maybe that's intentional, maybe it's not. Uh, what do you think if we attack him? Let's just go for, yeah, let's go for the bigger guy. We might be able to take him out in one hit, even though these are relatively weak units that I've got going. Yeah, it was fine. Um, and that, in some ways, I think it, it waters down what I'm gonna use a highfalutin word for, the purity of the game. It's less of a pure strategy game and more of kind of a hybrid where you're less concerned about, you know, knowing the mechanics and making the exact right decisions at all times. And, uh, you know, more concerned about just being like, I'm gonna play this game and have the experience of playing this game. It's not a game that I could see myself, you know, buying the iPad version of, like, XCOM and playing the shit out of it and dying 10 missions into the campaign and being like, okay, I learned something and I'm gonna restart now. We won that mission because we survived long enough, basically. What was that all about? Why did they attack us? Most missions... Uh, the, the first season is about an hour long. Most missions were about 10 minutes, with the last mission being a little bit longer. So I'm probably artificially inflating the length of this here by talking, uh, so just so you know. Alright, a message from Cerebro's in danger to Cerebro's chambers now. You know, you're gonna see the Power Rangers influence super, super prominently throughout. This is gonna be one such example. It wears it on its sleeve, which I think is why it's actually unavailable for sale in some Asian countries. Meanwhile, in Cerebro's chambers, some of these enemies are gonna come here and set the stage, I guess, for season two. You will never have your way, villains. I've worn Lion Pride, that's uh, my Power Ranger squad name, about your existence. Oh, we're gonna have a fight in Cerebro's chamber? That's actually pretty badass. By the way, graphics, I know that there's people out there that are very cynical about pixel art. At this point, it's retreaded territory so much that I don't want to go through it. You either like it or you don't. If you don't, that's fine. It's not going anywhere, at least uh, no time in the future. I think it looks cool, I think it looks cute, and it's got a neat aesthetic that, you know, you don't see this kind of Sentai, Power Ranger style aesthetic very often. Uh, more specifically with the art direction, but you know, as far as far as the sprites and textures and stuff like that, it looks good, man. It, it, I wouldn't necessarily put it up against something like, you know, Transistor or something like that, but for what it is, I think it looks good. Music's good, too. Lion Pride, you arrived just in time. Whoa, what is happening in here? They tracked our Nathaniel. <laughs> Nathaniel, I feel like I should have just left the default names. Nathaniel is the name of my mecha, my zord, that I used to punch the shit out of really large monsters. And they were able to find our hideout. They want to destroy everything. Get ready. You know what another game that this re reminds me of uh, in terms of its tone and atmosphere is uh, Costume Quest. I'm not even gonna get into the shit surrounding Double Fine, Space Base DF9, Broken Age, etc, etc. But, Halo, or, uh, Costume Quest, I haven't played Costume Quest too, but Costume Quest has this, like, serious aesthetic in a kid environment. So, like, the kids think that it's serious, and it actually had the kind of Sentai thing going on as well, at least a superhero thing. Um, but it's, it's, it's like kids playing cops and robbers, right? If you get shot, you die, but you don't actually die, you just lose the game. That's kind of the environment we have going on here as well. Let's see if you're gonna survive through this. Let your souls burn bright, Lion Pride. Are our heroes ready for such a problem to face? Ha! Our narrator talks so funny. Jeez, excuse me. Defeat four enemies in the same turn, win in five turns. I haven't really been great about the director's instructions, but I've never come close to losing a mission. I'm gonna drink some water. It's getting quite hot in this room. 
Alright, are we going to defeat four enemies in the same turn? It's possible. How do we do it? Well... Oh, we can't hit you with the dagger. Um, what are attacks? 74 to 87? Hmm... Probably the best way to do it would be to get an easy two kills with our roundhouse kick by coming in here. So that's that's going to be two KOs. Square house kick, sorry. Then we only have to kill two more enemies with four people. And that's going to be very simple. As, assuming you can reach over here, and then you two should be able to reach over here. Yeah, okay. In fact, we can do one better. Oh, that nah, maybe we can. <laughs> we'll, we'll try, though. Like, if I use my sword attack on you, you're definitely gonna die. You were definitely gonna die regardless, but it looks cool. And that's, you know, I find myself doing that a lot in the game, being like, well... This isn't the best strategic choice based on my knowledge of what's happening right now, but it's gonna look badass, so we'll do it. Also, you know, like, I don't, I don't think there's much uh, strategy, at least... Again, I'm coming from only an hour into the game. But uh, based on uh, my experience so far, I don't think there's that much strategy when it comes to, like, uh, defense. Like, there's no cover-based system or anything like that. Maybe behind objects you can't be hit by ranged attacks. I'm not sure, but there's no overwatch or anything, so you can't bait enemies into coming to hit, hit you. At least not that I can tell. Um, that's 85%. I would rather just get, like, a, a kill, basically. Well, it looks like we can actually learn right now that there is no line of sight. And that's another easy kill for us. And you know what? We should probably be able to get, like, another kill like this. So we've definitely defeated four enemies in the same turn. Like, that's not even a question here. Will we be able to win in five turns? We definitely should be able to. Now, what I'm hoping is that this is a little bit of a longer mission. There's actually, like, a boss fight at the end of it. Um, because if there is a boss fight at the end of it, there's some really cool stuff. Sweet. We're going to do, like, a triple attack on this guy. Um, this is one of the times where it's actually going to be, like, effective for us to do so, I think. So I'm going to use this. It should be a free action. That'll stun the enemies. Which means that guy won't go next turn, so we might not want to attack him. And we'll put you into teamwork. I don't think we'll need to do, like, a four-person attack. I don't think we'll need to do a four-person attack. Let's try a triple attack, see if it works. Yeah, totally worked. Okay. Uh, and then we should be able to one-hit you. And that might be the end. Now we got one left. You can't go anywhere, though. Well, the healing is not necessary, so I guess I'll just probably come close to KOing you, or exactly KO you. Uh, boss fights might allow us to use our mecha, and they might all, although they might save that for season finales. And it might also allow us to, uh... Get a little bit more HP than I thought you would. Um, they might also allow us to use a finishing move, which is another kind of cool, uh, strategy that you can employ. Where you can have multiple, uh, well, all of your units. It has to be all of your units. And if they, uh, uh, we're not going to be able to get close enough here, unless we use some freaking teamwork, maybe. Um, all of your units are in teamwork together with one another. Nah, we can't do it. And then uh, that allows you to do a finishing move, which does a ton of damage. And if you finish an enemy off, you get, uh, with a finisher, I should say, you get a lot of audience points. Like, right now, we're so far below 4,000, I think there's probably a pretty good chance that we can um, get that to happen. Let me see, though. Can you get to where you need to go? Not even close. What if I put you here in teamwork? Can Blue Man now get to where you are? Not even close. Alright, we should probably just go to finish the job, I guess, here. But we'll try to do some teamwork on it just so we get the maximum amount of uh, audience that we can. Maybe I fudged up and could have had more audience show up uh, if I'd done better, but I think I probably just am one section away from finishing. Good job, everyone. We got some great footage there. Oh, maybe it actually is over. Now, here's the deal. TV Tubby will join the scene. Oh, we are going to have a boss fight. Good. And we should blast it off with a finishing move. Perfect. Escalating the fights is against the hero code, Jennifer. Our fans won't be happy. We have a lot of footage already. We'll edit the boss at the very end. Then let's get going. To the scene, TV Tubby. So TV Tubby, I guess, is going to be our boss here. Again, this is what's really the strength of this game, is the kind of story that's wrapping it up, and the fact that all the missions are scripted. Even if, mechanically, I don't like it as much as something like XCOM Enemy Unknown, as a whole overall package, well, I still don't like it as much as X XCOM Enemy Unknown, but it's a really fun game to play, even though it doesn't have me scratching my head and being like, oh, what's the best place to put, like, this class, this class, this class? I'm more just, like, kind of going through the motions. That sounds like a backhanded compliment, but I actually, it's, it's just a really... I hate to say it again, but it's a really pleasant and easy game to play. The time flies by pretty quickly, I don't find it tedious yet. Again, take it with a grain of salt, I'm relatively early into it, but still. Hopefully we'll be able to do a finishing move here, and then I'll show you the other aspects, the 
the tycoon type stuff. It's not that big of a deal. It's like a really, really light stuff. I probably just talked over a big joke moment, whatever. Um, it's really, really light stuff, but you'll see. There's a crafting system. It's, again, very, very light. I'll destroy you all and then Cerebro right after and then again and again. All right, TV Tubby. Minions, minions. Every boss fight has some minions here. Enemy variety? I've seen like four different kinds of enemies, but there is like a different boss every episode usually, which is cool. Some of the episodes are a little shorter. Um, defeat boss monster with a finishing move. Defeat the boss before defeating all the minions. We can do this fairly easily, I think. How would I do it? Um, let me try something here. I've got an idea. You go here. Teamwork. Oh, but does that block me from getting in there? No, it doesn't. Okay. You go here and teamwork. You go here and teamwork. This should be really good for the audience, I think. Then you go here and do a square house kick. And then we'll have some... What? They didn't join me on that? I've, I swear to God, I've done that with the sword attack before, and they've done it. <laughs> they've worked it out. I'm amazed that I, I wasted like two turns there for no reason. I thought that was really going to be cool. All right, so I figured we'd get this guy over here, um, because I don't want to go necessarily take on these enemies myself. Instead, um, we can kind of hang back, and this will be better. So my strategy here is, uh, you know, kill all of the enemies except one, and then let's go down here and... Uh, Try to do some damage to, to TV Tubby, and I'm not sure how many, like if we're if we're actually gonna be able to get in there. See if we can set up some acrobatics. I don't have the the total uh, understanding of that yet, but that does allow me to get there, which is good. I think we're only gonna be able to get two people in here. Yeah, unless again, some something to do with acrobatics helps us out here, but I doubt it. Um, probably just go for the hit there. Wow, that was weak. Okay, so you're going to do teamwork, and then you're just going to do your regular attack. So we got to weaken TV Tubby to the point where we can actually finish him off with a finishing move. Which might take a little while here, but again, we don't... Uh, that's actually a good thing we didn't kill that guy, because we don't want to kill him. We want to follow the director's instructions. Now, the real challenge is in getting into a position where you can do a finishing move. Now, the game is nice enough to tell you, I guess, but... We're going to try to trap him in here. If he does teamwork, maybe I can actually sneak in... Nah, it's going to take another turn, maybe even two. Oh, no, it won't, because I, oh, I can't teamwork after that. Okay, that's fine. Um, you know what? I'm just going to daze you at the very least. And I think we'll just put literally everybody in teamwork, but have nobody attack. Maybe we'll do like a circle of friendship here to heal ourselves up and hope that no knockback pushes us away, because if this actually works out the way I hope it works out, we should be able to offer a finishing move up like right now. Yeah, as long as we're not dazed, which we're not. Perfect. Okay, time for a finishing move. So let's get everybody in position first. It doesn't matter who we do the finishing move with. It just matters that we get everybody in here. It's sometimes hard to set it up, but teamwork, 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 teamwork. And then you should be able to do the finishing move. Eat it baddie is also my uh, chosen catchphrase. The finishing move should get us a lot of audience here. And that is it right there. Oh, he did die. You get an audience penalty if you use a finishing move and they don't die. It's just like professional wrestling. So we got all the director's instructions. I'm assuming we got max fans there. You aren't heroes by chance, Lion Pride. Congratulations on a job well done. Without you, I would have been turned off for good. Or even worse, they could have managed to reprogram me to side with evil. They'll never do that. We have a world to save and we need you by our side. But Cerebro, how did they track our Nathaniel? Probably the nature of our Nathaniel's components. The, the writing is a little... uh. Stilted, awkward at points. I know the developer, I don't think English is their first language, but it might also be intentional to kind of ape the source material that this is drawing from. I'm not trying to be an asshole. <laughs> it's basically what I'm saying. It's not a big deal, you know, it's the least important negative thing that I can mention. Could you clean up this mess since I can't really do anything about it? Ha ha, he's a brain in a jar. But aren't we all brains in a jar? Cool, we got all 4,000 audience we could there. Um, we get the faux kind of Twitter here. The Lion Pride is the new cool. No spoilers, just happy we have a new season of The Lion Pride. I don't know if these are, this was a game that was Kickstarter. I don't know if these are Kickstarter backers. That would be really cool. There are some characters in the game that are Kickstarter backers, which is fine, man. Like this, it, it, it breaks your immersion completely. But at the same time, this game just feels like a nice, feel good, like a labor of love kind of thing. So it, it's really, it's hard to describe. 
I'm not in the game when I'm playing the game, but I'm having a good time playing the game, if that makes sense. So we got 120 new fans there, which is actually really good. Uh, here's, we're not gonna do too much of this, but basically there's a story being told through email here. A proposal. Hello, card lovers. I'm CEO of Pen and Cardboard, inspired by Wizards of the East Coast, Dangers and Cardboards. As the world's number two secret society of cardboard box admirers, we're in awe of the masterful display of your Lion Pride TV show. Would you be interested in becoming members of our cardboard cult? It's a lifetime fee of $32. You'll get a shipment of assorted cardboard flavors in your mailbox every three months for the rest of your lives. We're gonna say yes here. Um, I think this is just gonna give us a lot of cardboard, which is a crafting ingredient. There's a story being told through those messages as well. Marketing alert! Oh god, what's our marketing alert here? A part-time accountant, a friend of your dad's, plus $100 per episode, minus $40 per episode. How could I not? <laughs> that seems like a that seems like a pretty good hire, if you ask me. Which offer will you take? Give me three episodes, man. Yeah, okay, so that's fine. Uh, what do we want to do here? We've got 470 fan power. We can use that for things like sell key holders, plus $50 per episode. So this gives us money, but it, we trade in fran uh, our power for it. He uses 320 fan power for an interview. Hmm. That's 100. Let's let's try that. I want more fans. And then yeah, let's do sell key holders. We'll make a little bit more money. So shopping, shopping. You saw earlier. This is what allows me to buy new equipment to equip my people with. What I like about this is that you can very clearly see if you craft something or sorry buy something, how will it affect them? For example, knuckle gloves, 176. Stri slightly strong stronger attack, double crit chance, that's huge. There's not like... I mean, there is class-specific weaponry and stuff like that, but most of the time I just try to like, drag it over and give everybody something that'll benefit them. Like, the, the bow is an assist weapon only, I think. I'm not sure. Avenger Broom, I haven't used that at all. But you know, you can see how this will affect it. Oh yeah, it, it is lead only, cool. So we'll try to get those lead-specific weapons the more I play. Um... Crafting, you know, enemies drop things, you can use those things to craft other things. Like, for example, this bucket helmet, which I can't afford. Or these leather gloves. Um, a garage-made suit. I like it, we need some silver tape, though. Uh, let's try to equip, like, uh, leather gloves. Plus 15 attack, plus 1 random property. So that makes it like you want to use it, because you might get a sweet random property. It's going to lower our crit chance, raise our damage a lot. Uh, I think we should lower our crit chance on a unit that doesn't need to crit to kill enemies easily. So leather gloves, I think maybe on our assault will be the right choice there. That's probably not the right idea to put gloves on a unit we just put gloves on. You know, that we just bought gloves for them, but you get the idea. You can craft two of these as well. Now this messes with your health, but really raise... Oh, th this guy seems to really benefit from it. There's no negatives. Anyway, that's the crafting system. You don't have to know the recipes or anything. You can also buy new things for your studio. Like, for example, I could buy a bigger studio for a thousand. Looks better, unlocks medium level upgrades. So there's, again, like a, a very slight base building element to it. Um, what about some wood crates? Mecha gets plus 10% HP. That seems pretty expensive for me right now. Workbench, crafting rate plus 25. Uh, it, it's kind of like a rogue legacy thing going on. I'm not going to buy any of these just yet. And then our Mecha. Unfortunately, we're not going to see that in action, but you can see, you know, we can equip it with various different things. We don't have any silver tape to make that, but it gives us good defense. And finally, our actors, who we can customize as well. And with their skills, we can actually uh, activate them here. Fan club. Gain 20 audience for team acrobatic, plus 35 audience for team attack. Gain 15% HP. Now, I want the audience. That's going to be our skill. I'm not going to go through them all here, but there's a variety of other skills here, you see. Oh, gain skill regen every time you attack. That actually seems pretty good, but I, I like our existing move as well. Multi-shot. Find weakness. Target up to four tiles away takes 30% more damage for three turns. Oh, yeah. I guess as you do more of this... Um, oh, sniper cap plus 8% damage for each tile distance to your target. I didn't know that. I should have been paying attention to that. Um, you can spec up a little bit. That's kind of cool. I like the square house kick. You gain three audience for each tile you move. Yeah, man. I like that more than the dodge, honestly. Let's activate that. These all get unlocked in various seasons, so I'm assuming like season 4 or maybe season 5 after that is the last season. That probably puts you at around 6 to 8 hours of gameplay for like a standard uh, comparison amount. Also, if we go back to the main menu here, um, and we'll save. I I'm not sure if there's multiple save files. We'll check that out though, but you can see that this is basically the only mode. I don't want to check it, but there are- Oh, I clicked it by accident. 
<laughs> there are three different difficulty levels. I'm using uh, interesting, not challenging. Challenging is the most difficult. So I'm actually assuming that I probably just overwrote my existing save file. I'm an idiot. Maybe there are no multiple save files. I'm not. It's not going to let me get back to main menu here, I think. Oh, there we go. Quit to main menu. All right. This wouldn't be the first let's look at where I've deleted a save file here. Oh, there's multiple save files. Okay. All is forgiven. I don't know if maybe you can loop through them or it's because I only have one here. My mistake. Due diligence. In any case, this is Chroma Squad. It's 15 bucks. Would I recommend it? Uh, if... It's, it's such a cop-out. If you like what you see, I think you should pick it up. Uh, it's not the best tactical strategy game I've ever played. Are you going to put 100 hours into it? Is it going to become an obsession like XCOM? Like Massive Chalice is looking pretty sweet, honestly. Not to bring up Double Fine again. Um, like uh, Fire Emblem. Did I say Fire Emblem? XCOM, etc., etc. I don't think it's going to become an obsession. I think it's a very good diversion. I think it's cute, colorful aesthetic. Very lighthearted, fun to play. It's like a, uh, it's like drinking a Bud Light Lime instead of like a really heavy, like, Imperial Stout. It's fun. You probably don't want to do it all night. But, uh, you know, for the, the length of time and the price that it is, I think it's okay. I don't know if I'm going to finish the whole thing. I might, though. I kind of wish there was a little bit more strategic depth uh, to the tactical side of the game. And, I, I mean, everything is basically like, I wish it was just a little bit more strategic within the actual like strategy part of the game. That part seems a little light, a little easy. I've heard on Twitter that it's get, it gets harder towards the end, but you know, that might be too little, too late, or too much too late for that matter. Um, but I like it, I like it. I think it's, uh, if you like what you see, you can definitely get your money's worth here. Relatively cheap for a game of this scope, I think, but uh, of course you always have the option to wait for a sale. In any case, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you wanna see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.